All right, uh, Tim Root, I don't know if he's good at this stuff. I do know he's in a housing encyclopedia, the guy behind Citus AMC. They took a look at this whole big picture. And, you know, Tim, I was thinking with you coming on with the median price hitting these record levels, uh, and obviously it's affecting activity, but I had a flip view of it. I don't know what you think. I expected those numbers to be a heck of a lot worse. I expected everything to have ground to a halt, and that has not happened. What do you make of that? Uh, hey, Neil. I can't wait to figure out what uh, vegetable you think I am, so maybe we'll say that for the end. <laughs> um, hey, look, m make no mistake. I mean, I was thinking about this morning. I was like, you know, to be a, a housing analyst, for lack of a better term, for the last 10 years was kind of like being a weatherman in Orange County. Like, okay, it's not that complicated. It's going to be sunny. You know, things are looking bright, <laughs> you know, and you've got a little bit of a cold front coming on. What I would say is I noticed that the, the March to April numbers were softening, right? I mean, obviously, interest rates started to increase, and then you had the 75 basis points increase. And oof, uh, the, uh, the May to June seems like an, an arresting development. Um, it definitely slowed down. But again, you're coming from a base that was such a frantic pace that even taking a little bit of a froth off doesn't mean that this is a soft market. Instead of getting five to ten offers for a house, you're getting, you know, clutch your pearls, three to five offers per house. I mean, so there's still a lot of positive things, but, you know, two more rate hikes, if they actually carry out the, the will of Jerome Powell and get this thing to Fed funds up another one and a half, one and three quarters percent, eesh, uh, that's going to be ugly for the housing market. I guess the question is how ugly, because we're averaging about a 5.4 million annual rate, a unit rate, on, on home sales, existing home sales. But normally during a recession, uh, and, and, and at this stage, uh, you, you would be seeing something historically of 4 million or likely well under that. We're nowhere near that. So is it just because the rate hikes and the severity of them have just really got going, or what? So, I mean, it's a little bit of, it's obviously supply and demand imbalance. Uh, supply has been underbuilt for at least the last 10 years. And you have the biggest cohort in history, the 28 to 34 year old millennials coming of age, starting households. And, you know, as we've talked about before, you know, 330 million people in the country and they, hey, they've got a bias towards living indoors. And, you know, the rental market is no picnic either. There's no inventory. Right. The rates are going up just as fast and they're just as impacted by interest rates as the residential uh, homeowner market. So, you know, there's still a lot of good things to go in the housing market. And quite frankly, the thing that, that challenges me that I get concerned about is historically, you've always had this, you know, if you were to buy a house in 30 years ago, the rule of thumb was, um, you know, you shouldn't buy more than three times your earnings. So if you're making $50,000 a year, you shouldn't buy more than $150,000. Well, because interest rates have been laddering down for 30 years, it makes housing more affordable. So that $50,000 uh, earner now has to buy a $300,000 house, which is six times their income. Again, that works hmm. from an affordability standpoint as rates go down, but as rates go, go up, uh, uh, that, that's, uh, that's tense. That's, that becomes unaffordable. Yeah, in the past, you hoped that the, the, the appreciation, the value of your home uh, would make those numbers sort of fall in line. I did notice looking at the, the, the regional breakdown of these existing home sales, uh, they were particularly pronounced, uh, that is the price movement um, in the South. Uh, I'm sure Florida is a big reason for that, up 20% of the Northeast by comparison, about 5.8%. Uh, so in the hot markets, some say frothy, I, I don't know if that applies here, but uh, they're due for a comeuppance more than other parts of the country. So the red hot, maybe, Florida market or some of these others that have seen booms. What do, what do you what do you look at? Yeah, I think you're right, Neil. So I mean, obviously the South, like Miami and Orlando, has gotten pretty well um, jacked up over the. You know, Austin is another good one. Las Vegas is another good one. I mean, the biggest markets I saw last year in terms of home price appreciation are like Tampa, Vegas, Knoxville, Tennessee, and Orlando. They've had like 30 percent appreciation rates. Some of those you're already starting to see are showing the biggest increase in terms of price uh, reductions. So like Las Vegas, blistering hot last year, but you're seeing 5% of their properties right now that are listed having price discounts. So I mean, they're, they're reeling it back just as hard as they were pushing it going forward. I think the, the markets that are probably most vulnerable, thinking about if we have higher interest rates, of course, and then the prospect of a recession, and then you start getting into the manufacturing, the industrial hubs. You're looking at West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin. Those are, those are areas that didn't really get the same sort of 300, 400 percent appreciation rates, and they're most vulnerable from the lower end of the market. Wild stuff. You too, Neil. Thanks.
All right, in the meantime here, we're up about five.